Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Fight a Subscriber, where me and a subscriber try to give each other a good kicking through the medium of fighter craft we've designed. Just a quick note before we get started, something I keep forgetting to say in these things. If you have sent me an email with a crafter fight or an inquiry about mods or anything like that, don't worry, in all likelihood I have received it. I am just genuinely terrible at responding to emails. Anyway, you can see my three fighter craft here. All they need now is an opponent. So once again, I have fired up Google's random number generator, asked it to pick from my list of subscriber craft, and it has very kindly selected this for us. This is the Vanguard by Cameron McDonald. Uh, Cameron actually sent me two craft, and from the descriptions he gave of both of them, this one sounded like it fitted the bill a little bit better. For the most part, it's a pretty standard twin-engine fighter craft. It's got two Saturn afterburning engines. Uh, it's got that wing and tail configuration, which is very reminiscent of the F-22 and the F-35, uh, as are quite a lot of the craft I'm being sent at the moment. There is one pretty big difference from most of the craft I'm sent, though. Uh, earlier, as I was looking over it in the space plane hangar, I couldn't see the Vulcan cannons anywhere, and then I discovered, tucked just inside those air intakes, a pair of gow so, for the second episode in a row, I'm getting a gow armed craft, which I'm kind of happy about, because last time I really wanted those gow to cause merry havoc, and it didn't quite work out, but uh, now I get a second bite of the cherry, so it's, uh, it's all good. As usual, I have taken this craft up for a test flight, and in the whole question of speed versus manoeuvrability, this one definitely leans towards the speed end of the scale. I didn't do most of the test flight with full throttle, because... I tried it for a little bit and it just got silly. Um, be interesting to see how that affects the fight. Uh, I did enjoy flying this craft. Maybe could have done with a touch of extra manoeuvrability, but generally there's just something about it that's just really nice to fly. I also accidentally discovered my favourite thing to do with this craft, which is fly it really close to the ground. There's just something about the balance between stability and manoeuvrability with this craft which makes this really, really easy. Kind of reminds me of the new Top Gun trailer. Um, I really hope that movie isn't as terrible as I kind of suspect it might be. But uh, anyway, let's move on to our first fight. So first of all, as is traditional, the vanguards will go up against my Eurofighter-esque Cyclones. Let's get this one started. And so it begins. The vanguards turn to get missiles away, although they're not going to be doing it particularly quickly. Maybe lacking, as I said, a touch of manoeuvrability. It looks like the Cyclones have gotten theirs away first. And Jebediah Kerman's lead vanguard has not... Yes. Sorry, confused there for a second. Yes, the Cyclones have gotten theirs away. Now the vanguards get theirs away. And uh, it looks like... Those heading for the vanguards go by without doing any damage. Now the Cyclones have in the past been very vulnerable to early missile kills. We'll have to see what happens here, although they appear to be successfully dodging them for now. We are nearly in gun range. This is ridiculous. Oh! And that is Jebediah's craft. Not quite disabled by an early missile hit, but pretty near as damn it. Uh, recent episodes we have seen subscriber craft go down to an early missile kill and it's not necessarily the end of them but um, I think for Jebediah at least it's going to be quite a job to turn this one around I think quite a job to kind of pull out of this dive oh and that's one of the cyclones gone one of the cyclones killed by a missile and as Jebediah looks to be saying farewell to this world it is two apiece Rowena Kerman dodges a missile there. More flying in. I'm very surprised this hasn't gone to guns already. Rowena firing a missile over in what looks to be completely the wrong direction. I'm not sure if that'll turn around and actually do any damage, but uh, there we go. Another missile fired off. How are the vanguards doing? Richmond Kerman. Yeah. Missile goes well behind him, and he is safe for the moment. Daffy, Ker Daffy Kerman's gone. Daffy Kerman is gone. So it's not looking like a good first round outing for the vanguards. Although, one craft down. They've been in this position before. 
And if Dappy can distract that cyclone for a little longer, what was that? That is the other vanguard gone. Completely drops off the uh, the vessel switcher. And that is... Is that still more of the... Yeah, it's just more vanguard debris. So it looks like a trio of missile kills brought the vanguards to an early end. Uh, maybe a bit unlucky. They did manage to get one of the cyclones down. Uh, let's move on and see how they do in their next fight. So not the best start for the vanguards, but uh, still plenty of time to turn this round. And now they go up against my club tails, the more manoeuvrable of my three craft. So uh, let's get them into the air. So our craft are nearly at the 8km mark. And here we go for round two. Couple of interesting things about uh, last the last fight. The craft did seem to get up quite close to each other, but there wasn't really that much gunfighting going on. I mean, there was a little bit, and I, I really do want to see these, these Gow 8s shred something. So it would be, nice, uh, be nice if we get some of that. Also, these craft are set up to start at a much higher altitude but they do kind of lose it once the uh, the missiles start coming in. So, hmm. Anyway, the missile tennis is already well underway. Uh, just checking to make sure none of the vanguards are falling prey to an early missile kill. Where's the third one? Over there. Closing the distance quite rapidly. Now, these club tails don't usually fall to missiles, but, uh, you know, there's a first time for everything. Um, yeah, really closing the distance there. Four kilometres. Oh, now here comes some gunfire. Can Jebedi... Oh! And that is an early missile kill for the vanguards. One of the club tails shredded. Okay, this is looking more promising. Jebedi Kerman trying to come about. Maybe lay guns onto one of the other craft. Has guns incoming, though. With these craft not being that manoeuvrable, with the, uh, the club tails certainly seeming to have the edge there. It's going to be about a little bit of teamwork. Oh, that's something gone. That is one of the vanguards. That is a gun kill by one of the club tails on one of the vanguards. I was just about to say, with the lack of manoeuvrability, it might all be about making any numeric advantage count, but that seems to have gone out the window here. Daphne Kerman fires a missile trying to help out Jebediah Kerman. Another missile kill would be very handy right now, but that gunfire is getting very close. Oh! And that is just what the Doctor ordered for the vanguards. One of the club tails. Yeah. Missing one half of its wings, its air intake gone. It is out of here. So now it will be about whether or not Whoever the club tail is not fighting can get on that club tail's tail, if that makes any sense at all. Now, Rowena Kerman doesn't make good her escape. Does get onto the tail of the other vanguard, though. It was all the vanguards a second ago. Now it looks like they could be in trouble. It's all down to Jebediah. One good shot is all he needs, but he will need to find that soon. There we go! That's some damage. Was it enough? Loses, uh, loses some wing surface. Loses some control surface. It's injured but not out. Now those other, two, those two vanguards will have to come round and finish this off quickly because it's still, it's still quite a capable craft, even with a fair bit of damage done to it. Looks like one of the vanguards is already on its tail. More gunfire, loses more wing surface. Looks like Rowena Kerman might spin out more gunfire coming in from the other vanguard. Surely at this stage the vanguards have got to be the overwhelming favourites to go on and win this. Surely. Surely this is the moment, Daphne. Again, being very hesitant with these those guns. Breaks off a little bit. Decides to reacquire. I'm not sure if that's down to sort of like the minimum altitude settings, uh, altitude settings on these craft. Looks like Jebediah has fired a missile. Oh, but that has taken out the wrong craft. 
That looks like that was a heat seeker. And is that something the vanguards are very much going to regret before too long? At the moment it is advantage Jebediah. He is on the he is on the tail of that club tail, trying to line up that shot. The problem is if you get too close, those club tails do have the ability to uh, to just shake you off. Hmm. This seems to be bugging out a little bit. Um, Chabadar just will not fire, just won't even select a weapon at the moment, so I think I'm going to have to go to a judge's decision. And given the relative state of the two craft and how they are positioned, I think I'm going to have to give that to the Vanguard. Usually in this situation, um, the decision would go to the, uh, the club tails because the vanguards are out of fuel. But as I've said, it looks like it looks like there's it's bugged out a little bit. Jebediah just will not select that gow eight for some reason. Okay, we'll give that one to the vanguards and we will move on. So a judge's decision means it's one fight apiece. Um, yeah, I mean, I know those Gow 8s can be reluctant to fire sometimes, but there the AI was just refusing point blank to select them at all. So I think I had to say it, it had bugged out. And I think given the state of the fight at the time, I had to give it to the Vanguards, really. But uh, anyway, moving on to the final fight, the Vanguards will be going up against my flying wing-ish Panthers. Let's, uh, let's get this one started. So here we go one final time, and so far there has been a distinct lack of Gawait shredding. I mean, there was a little bit on one of the club tails, but uh, no, I want to I want to see a cloud of debris. The Panthers have gotten their missiles away already. The vanguards are replying promptly, and now everybody breaks low to start dodging those missiles. Will we get any early missile kills this time? Because that seems to have, it seems to have pretty much dictated the fight so far. I'm hoping the fight, this fight at least, is uh, is done more with uh, close-up combat and uh, maybe even a hand-to-hand -hand kill. You never know. How are we doing? Already down to four kilometers. These craft are fast, but they uh, haven't really made that speed count so far. Closing in though. Switching to Gow 8. Jebediah. Oh, and that is one of the Panthers gone already. Not quite out of it, but not, not really in it either. And that is one of the Vanguards. Also gone to a missile kill. It's 2v2 and a half. One of the Vanguards tries to finish off this Panther. I can't imagine it will be that difficult a task. Looks like it has a missile coming in now. Tries to dodge. I'm not sure how effective it will be at dodging missiles. Ah, uh, that seems to have gone well past, though. This Panther actually putting guns onto one of the vanguards. Guns overheat, though. Laying down with both those guns. Vanguard seems to be opening up a bit of distance, though. How are things looking from that cockpit? Rich Mulkerman. Can you come about and cause a bit of havoc? That, was that a Vanguard or a club tail? Because that was very close to the ground for a second. Hold still. That is another craft gone. That is the other Vanguard wiped off of the vessel switcher. It's two and a half V1. It is not looking good for Richmond Kerman. Uh, the Panther breaks off, popping countermeasures. I'm not sure what that was. Two missiles come very close to Richmond Kerman. I'm not sure if that was because those were sidewinders and those missiles don't really distinguish. But another missile coming in. That one looks close. And very quickly, the vanguards are wiped out of the sky. So it's victory for the Panthers in this final fight. And that means, I'm afraid, the writing is on the wall for the vanguards. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look at the final scores. 
So a brave fight from the Vanguard, but with just four kills and one survivor over the three fights, that gives them five points well out of the running for this season's final. Maybe a touch of bad luck in there, but I think it's quite telling that the two craft on the bottom of the table at the moment are the two that used Gowates. Uh, maybe not the most ideal air-to-air -air weapon, although I would love to be proved wrong on that. Uh, by all means, please. Thank you very much to Cameron and McDonald for sending me this craft. Uh, I really did enjoy flying it. Uh, if you want me to fight any of your craft, it's probably too late to get into this season of Fighter Subscriber. I have received a lot of craft, uh, but if you want to send it anyway, feel free. Who knows what the future will bring? Details in the description. So that will be all for today. Uh, usual stuff. If you are so inclined, please consider liking, subscribing, following me on Twitter, link down below. Uh, and I will be back soon with more Fighter Subscriber. But for now, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.